It's no trick. Believe me, today's movie is a real treat. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner core geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Ryan Trenchard Smith's video store darling, Night of the Demons 2. Released in 1994, Night of the Demons 2 finds another group of teens running afoul of the demonic Angela when they party at Hall House. Like the film that inspired it, this one was a video store staple in the 90s, thanks in no small part to its excellent box art and entertaining mix of splatter and frights. But can Angela kill enough troubled teens to earn a coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is brought to you by patrons Stephen Razor, Jason Madison, and Samurai Stoner. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. Seriously, every little bit helps keep this show rolling. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on these guys. We're still trying to make ends meet as door-to-door -door Bible salespeople, apparently. Oh <laughs> yeah, this house definitely needs the Holy Spirit. And tore up from the floor up. And let's go ahead and establish it some more. Feels like something we should get out of the way early. These two could be the new stars of an HGTV show called Hell House, where they reno and exercise your home. I'd <laughs> totally watch that. Great, now it's a Rockwell video. Do you kids even remember somebody's watching me? Christ, I'm old. I always feel like somebody's watching me. This place seems to be empty, except Amelia Kincaid is squatting here. Sure, Amelia might look like an extra from a Bauhaus video, but that's not going to stop our do-gooders from asking the important questions. Have you been saved? Look at her face. She clearly thinks these people are high. Interior decor, courtesy of Spirit Halloween. At any rate, I bet that cake is devil's food. It's devil's food! See? I told you. Me and this movie are on the same page already. Apparently, it's got some kind of cherry filling, too. Finger licking good indeed. And credits. Not gonna lie, this is pretty low effort compared to the awesome animated credits in the original Night of the Demons. Just saying. Whoa, Christine Taylor? She went on to become Marsha Brady in the Brady movies. Oh, and she's Mrs. Ben Stiller. Well, sure, it's the credits. I guess we can cram in another house establishing shot. Hey, it's our first Brian Trenchard Smith movie. Tarantino has called Trenchard Smith one of his favorite directors. With a filmography that includes movies like this and Turkey Shoot, it's easy to see why. With the credits over, we jump into the movie proper, where these guys are getting an eyeful. You know what they say, using binoculars really helps you bring things into focus. Meanwhile, Marsha's over here running the Midnight Society meeting this week. Anyway, this is all an exposition dump in case you somehow wandered into Night of the Demons 2 without seeing the first film. They say it's because she descended into hell body and soul. Anyway, this meeting of the Midnight Society comes to an abrupt close when this sister shows up. That's enough of your nonsense, ladies. Nice of Brian Trenchard Smith to give us this shot of a clock so we can easily keep track of how long it takes for this movie to get rolling. Later that night, everyone's asleep, but Mouse here realizes she's late for football practice. I gotta say, Amelia Kincaid looks a lot older here. I mean, it was six years between movies, but still. Oh wait, now I recognize her. But this is just Double football practice. We got two a days. Meanwhile, our sister is working on her ruler foo. Sure hope she measures up. I was gonna make a pun about her fencing here, but I had no point. Combat training is interrupted when Father Bob shows up to pull rank. He wants the kids to run their own Halloween dance. <laughs> Look at this dude. You just know he's been a youth pastor who says shit like, I just wanna rap with the kids about Jesus. She is like, I'm still calling the Vatican and telling them you've been getting handsy with the altar boys. Anyway, let's check in on Mouse. Chick looks like a cross between Dario Argento and Peter Bark. Are you going to the dance? Oh, come on. I'll suspend my disbelief a lot, but I'm not buying anyone who's asking Mouse to the dance. And the Mean Girls are on a smoke break. But that doesn't mean they can't drop some vital exposition. I can't believe Mouse is Angela's sister. <laughs> I can't either. I mean, we know Angela parties. But wait, there's more. She's an orphan. Well, that definitely explains the haircut. Man, big turnout for Mass today. <laughs> nice work, sinners. Jesus, 1994, this dude is still trying to pull off a half-assed mullet. I thought he was going to look like Andre Agassi. Sister Gloria has some words of wisdom, though. Save a little room for the Holy Ghost. That's weird. Is she pitching them on the idea of a supernatural threesome? Kinky. Sweet, Brad has a copy of the Satanic Bible. Well, he did have one. And now we're off to sex ed with Sister Gloria. I for one am sure the lady who has never had sex is the perfect source of information on how to do it right. I mean, just listen to this gem. A kiss is a sin. 
when it is an upper persuasion for a lower invasion. Well, that's going on. Father Bob is just over here kicking it with the fellas. Hey, have you guys heard that new DC Talk album? It's the bomb, yo. Oh yeah, this was me in high school. 100%. Maybe then, Father, demonology will finally get the kind of scientific credibility it deserves. I didn't even go to a religious school. I just never passed up an opportunity to talk about demons or serial killers. Apparently, this school has been so ravaged by budget cuts they couldn't afford a basketball court and instead had to settle for a basketball sidewalk. But they have tennis courts, where we're seeing the worst display of tennis since pieces. Anyway, let's see what Kurt has to offer in the way of pickup lines. Name's Kurt. Ladies call me King Snake. I heard they call you Inchworm. Damn, someone call the cops. There's been a murder over here. But look out, because it's about to get worse. I see some nunishment in their future. Oh yeah, here comes the nun. Just like the Beatles wrote it. But this chick's not having it. This is all just a big misunderstanding. Sister Gloria is not buying it though, and they're all barred from the dance. It's pretty unbelievable. With that plotline wrapped up, we jump over to our half-assed version of Ghost Hunters already in progress. I am in the sacristy of St. Rita's Chapel preparing to conduct an experiment of demon conjuration. When he's getting ready to break on through to the other side, our dorks are on dance prep. Sweet, I knew Sister Gloria listened to Nun Slaughter. Shirley's here too, showing us why she's totally gonna ace next week's spelling test. Got a minute? Who, me? Y-O-O. -O. You. Aw, look. Perry made his very first demonic summoning circle in art class. And it looks like it's already working. Say what you will, but this new beta version of Candyland 2.0 is looking pretty sweet. Give me a hollow. Come on, Perry. Just sound out the words you don't know. Eventually, all his third grade reading skills pay off. This isn't Bloody Mary or Candyman, but close enough. Then Father Bob shows up. Son, are you in here summoning demons? Again? Perry pleads his case, but the Padre isn't having it. Come on, son. Let's go work this out with some frisbee golf. Outside, this van is not a rockin'. Yet. And that's because old Inchworm here can't seal the deal. What a loser. Inside, everyone's getting ready for the party. Looks like Mouse is going as Danielle Harris from Halloween 4. Turns out our ladies might be grounded, but Shirley has other plans. We're going to a party, and I ain't talking Sister Gloria's stupid dance either. And it looks like this party is going to be lit. Either they're going to Hull House or to find the Goonies. This is just how life was in the days before cell phones and ways. They head out and are immediately picked up by Freddy Krueger from the end of Nightmare on Elm Street. But it's gonna get worse for Inchworm because this dude is moving in on his lady. Oh yeah, give me some sugar, baby. Yeah, this is the face of a dude who just got friend zoned. They head off, but it looks like we're gonna have at least one more guest. Perry's found a map. Yeah, it was just this easy to throw travelers off in the days before Apple Maps. <laughs> Works every time. Oh yeah, this is like if the 90s were a person. They eventually arrive and man, Hull House looks different. Still looks like a matte painting, but a different matte painting. Come on, movie, let's focus. They head inside and we find this out. I had a pun ready to go, but I didn't think anyone would give a hoot. And Shirley's not only flunking spelling, but geometry too, apparently, because that pentagram is upside down. Well, that's going on, our host is ready. I wonder if they just reuse this footage from the first film. <laughs> oh yeah, this movie definitely blows. Then everyone splits up which is always the smartest choice. And just look at this place. The bathroom needs a complete reno. But it's not a total waste. Lonea Quigley's lipstick is still here. I wouldn't use that on your lips. I saw the first movie and know where that thing has been. I feel like Brian Trenchard Smith is basically just being a creepy peeper based on this camera placement. Well, the bathroom may be a dump, but this goth Airbnb has a pretty sweet master bedroom. Over in another part of Hall House, Inchworm makes his move, but Max Shrek is lurking right around the corner. If you're wondering where Mouse is, don't worry. She's still out here in the car. Guys, you forgot to crack the window for me. She's busy trying to figure out childproof door locks, but all she finds is this jump scare. <laughs> if you're wondering who this is, don't fret. It's that random dude who changed the street signs earlier. Man, I sure wish Stooge was here. Someone should be eating a bowl of fuck right about now. But he's not here, so I guess sacrificing Mouse will have to suffice. I'm gonna be honest, I can't tell if she's about to kill Mouse or mangle the Thanksgiving turkey here. I mean, a seance with a book. I bet it was penned by a ghost writer. But just before this can turn into a true crime documentary, Inchworm makes his move. But he gets manhandled and stabbed for his efforts. Our hero. But wait, it's the old fake knife. That or discount Polly Shore here is an immortal. 
And here comes Evil Dead Cam. It would be nice if we'd actually get some demon action in this movie since it's already halfway over. But I guess this pile of gooey maggots will work. And back to Creeper Cam. Marsha clearly needed to drop some potatoes in the crock pot. What the hell? I don't think this is the kind of face sitting anyone was expecting. Inchworm runs in to be the hero, but Marsha's like, Oh god, don't open it. You don't want to see what my body does to cafeteria sushi. Apparently, this place only had one bathroom, so I can't believe it's not the weasel is here peeing on the dude's carpet. No, we think that you It's a good thing he emptied his bladder, too, because he wanders right into this jump scare. Someone probably better get this dude a life alert bracelet because he's definitely fallen and can't get up. Then it's time for a little tonguing. Hell yeah. Yeah, exactly like that, you pervs. Angela could be Gene Simmons' kid. Oh yeah, time for some face sucking. Literally. With that, the Scooby gang is ready to call it a night. Hey, don't run over the camera, man. I don't want to alarm anyone, but I think it's gone from bad to worse as they've driven out of a Brian Trenchard Smith film straight into a Claudio Fragasso joint judging by all this fog. Well, they're busy trying to navigate their way through Carpenter's The Fog, Perry's busy being a narc. I think some of our kids snuck out the whole house tonight. <laughs> I sure hope that old adage about snitches getting stitches pans out here. It's all good, though, because Sister Gloria is about to go kick arse for the Lord. Wait, wrong movie. The kids should be safe, except they brought Linnea Quigley's lipstick with them. <laughs> nice work, guys. Oh god, she's using it. Back at the school, Sister Gloria is hoping she doesn't find herself in a Joe D'Amato nunsploitation flick. Wait, everyone's back at school? What happened to all the demons in Hull House? Damn you, Brian Trenchard Smith. Meanwhile, Father Bob is on a supply run. Gonna need a case of wafers and a pallet of Boone's Farm. It's for communion, I swear. With the delinquents back at school, they're about to crash the dance. But Marsha's like, hey, my parents are out tonight and Alice is off of Sam. Wanna hang out in my room? This new version of House Party isn't nearly as funky as the original. Shirley heads off to freshen up. Um, you're supposed to smear it on your lips, not eat it. Don't look now, but I think this lipstick is excited to see her. Great, this is headed to Legend of the Overfiend territory. But at least it looks like she's having fun. Oh yeah, look out, that vape pen is about to explode. Turns out the dance has another crasher. Say what you will about Angela, but she knows how to party. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This was me the first time I saw a goth chick too. Look at him. He's like, please, roofie me. And now it's like Susie and the Banshees version of Flashdance. Shame they didn't get the rights to Maniac. Okay, so this might be the first time the boobs do the groping. There's definitely something sinister at hand here. At the very least, some sweaty palms. Shirley is definitely looking great, though. Her sexy Reagan cosplay is totally working. With the demons freed, it's time for Sister Gloria to shine. Hey, I had no idea this was a prequel to that Warrior Nun show. Look out, she's got a rosary weapon. You could call these nunchucks. If you're wondering where Marsha and Inchworm are, they're making out in the van. Great, last time I saw people making out in the van, it was in the gates of hell, and the lady wound up ralphing up her guts all over McKelly Suave. Gloria's still prepping for battle. A chest of rulers? I guess we'll see how these demons measure up. Angela corners Marsha and Inchworm. <laughs> it doesn't go well. How's about a little head, tiger? Hey, let me make the jokes here. Also, she just totally kurgan the shit out of Inchworm. Dude's probably a centimeter worm now. Oh god, this is worse than that time Greg found that tiki necklace in Hawaii. And I'm not sure if Shirley's infecting her or if this has just morphed into a Skinamax After Dark flick. All the survivors are holed up in the chapel, where Perry has his holy water super soaker. There was a really weird but brief period in the mid-90s where almost every movie seemingly had a holy water super soaker. Those were strange days. Unfortunately, BB's broken off from the group. Looks like she wandered right into Suspiria. She's still exploring, but all she finds is this jump scare. <laughs> but don't worry, Mullet Guy is here to save the day. Tonight, on a very special episode of The Brady Bunch, Mike and Carol get Marsha an exorcism. Not gonna lie, I'll watch the hell out of that episode. Man, even this lady is sad about the direction things are headed. Road trip! We're all headed back to Hull House. Not really sure why we couldn't have just stayed there, but sure. I don't know, this new Scooby gang seems kinda lame. Also, where's the little saint on the dashboard? Anyway, they arrive and immediately split up. I'm going this way. Who's coming with me? BB, Mullethead, and Sister Gloria go one way, but they split up too. No worries, Discount Johnny Lawrence here is gonna sweep the leg on this door. <laughs> nice work. Almost budged it. He winds up locked in with Angela, who gives him a taste of her demonic pimp hand. From there, Perry and Father Bob find Rick, 
who's just here to make a point or two. Perry puts him down with the super soaker like he's old yeller. Honestly, that dude was so grimy that a super soaker filled with soap and water would have probably melted him too. Except Rick's not dead. By God, he's about to lock in the sleeper hold. Man, just like JR, if JR sucked. Luckily, Perry has some holy water balloons. Rick really loses his head over them, but I can't show that because prude tube. Hey, that's footage of Angela from the first night of the demons. Say it with me, kids. Recycling is important. Downstairs, mullet guy wakes up just in time for some hoops. Sure hope this isn't going to turn into the climax of the laughing dead. But before we can find out, Inchworm gets wet. Hell yeah. No, not like that. I mean, he gets nailed with this water balloon. Hey, remember Budget Polly Shore? Yeah, he's still in this movie. He's going to take a swing at getting a bigger part. Great, Perry just got negan That's how we deal with narcs around here. Perry might not be dead, though. Looks like he's back as one of Crowley's demons. But before he can die, we get some deathbed exposition. My favorite kind. I think that's Angela's plan. I think she's gonna kill Mouse. Back inside, it seems pretty clear that Polly Shore here missed the sexual harassment seminar at work. No means no, man. But before you can seal the deal, it's time for some nun foo. I feel like we've been building up to this for the whole movie. Sure hope it was worth the wait. Oh yeah, she's delivering a full sermon of pimp rosaries. She's beating him like he stole from the collection plate. Too bad they're not out of water yet. Father Bob is back and reconsidering that whole vow of celibacy thing. Before things can get completely out of hand, Mullet Dude hits him with a water balloon. Looks like someone knows how to make a splash. And for some reason, this turns everyone into goo. Look, I'm not complaining. Before I go, give me just a minute to tell you about your lord and savior. Of course, Polly's still left. At least until he takes a water balloon right to the old weasel. They do eventually find Mouse, who looks like an extra from a Nine Inch Nails video. But Angela's here too. She's gonna help Gloria meet her maker. There can be only one. Man, there are more beheadings in this movie than Highlander. Wait a minute, it's a fake out. Well, that or she regrew her head. Hey, since we're all here, let me show you my new magic act. I'm gonna make Mouse levitate. Then for the encore, she gives BB a mullet guy crippling IBS. Angela wants Mouse to go all Connor McCloud on Sister Gloria, but instead she cuts to the chase and stabs her instead. Don't worry, I'm no doctor, but she looks to be in stable condition. And then Angela takes some shots to the face. Hell yeah. No, no, with the super soaker. Say what you will, but that chick is smoking. Honestly, the melting effect is pretty good. I can't really show it, but go check out the movie. All right, who's ready for Sunday school? I gotta say, that was a pretty non-conventional ending. Oh, what the hell? There's a snake chick. Where the hell did she come from? Angela is really high-waisted. Honestly, how hard can it be to outrun this chick? She doesn't even have legs. Things are looking bleak for our heroes, but Mullet Ninja is here to save the day. Yeah, you could say Angela is feeling pretty cross. And explosion. With order restored, it's time for some famous last words. Everything is going to be all right. And the swerve ending. Oh, evil lives. Sweet PS1 graphics. So, what have we learned from Night of the Demons 2? Well, for starters, the Brian Trenchard Smith films are always a good time. BTS is one of those directors who never gets a huge budget, but always delivers. This outing isn't as good as the first Night of the Demons, but it's still pretty entertaining. This one hits all the B-movie high notes, but can it deliver enough splatter to earn a five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Night of the Demons 2 mostly delivers. We're treated to multiple decapitations, melting demons, dismembered body parts, Angela's awesome makeup, and that wicked snake creature. There's more than enough here to justify a very respectable three barf bag rating for this one. Night of the Demons 2 is a sick little flick. Looking for another movie where hapless humans have to fight off demons? Then be sure to check out my review of Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.